All right, another alcohol ink ornament. Or maybe it's not alcohol ink. Maybe it's something else. But we are going to play with these guys. So I guess it's not alcohol ink. It's glitter. I don't know. I'll make up my mind in just a moment. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. So I've been doing a series of alcohol ink ornaments. Now, I do want to talk about one thing. Um, alcohol ink has a tendency to be very transparent, so you can lose your imagery from background items or like it's hanging in the tree, all the bristles and stuff of the tree. So, or leaves, prongs, greenery, lights, other things. Words are hard today. Bear that in mind. I'm sorry, I apologize early. <laughs> At any rate, so what I'm going to address is the inside of the ornament. So this video could be used for any kind of medium that you're going to do on the outside, whether it's alcohol ink, paint, embellishments, you know, what have you not, even risk. Um, but today we're going to work with the inside. So we're going to play with some glitter. And I've got Pally Acrylic. That is what I'm going to be using for the inside glue. In fact, I should have brought the can over. Let me reach behind me. And this is what I'm using here today. And I just literally pour this into this little squeeze bottle here. And it makes it really, really easy to work with with these ornaments. And I will set the camera up and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna backtrack it a little bit. Now, since we're dealing with filling up the inside of these guys, and obviously we're gonna lose that for now, um, you wanna have something, a cup to uh, contain any of the drips that are left over from the polyacrylic, and it also holds it nice and neat on the top, okay? So that will be helpful. Have a few of these same size cups around because also working with and meaning filling it up with a glitter and such, it'll, it'll free up your hands. It makes it a lot, lot easier. The other thing is to get a piece of paper and coil it around, put a couple bits of tape on it, a funnel to go inside said ornament will also help. So I've got polyacrylic here, as you can tell, I've been been working away. And I'll show you um, the uh, ones I worked on earlier so you get some ideas. But simply just pour some in. And if you get too much, not to worry, that's why we have the cup. And you can see I've got a little bit down here below. And since this has been pretty much covered the whole time, this is staying nice and fluid. And I can just pour this right back into the bottle. In fact... Speaking of that, since I got the other cup, I'm just going to go ahead and plug it with my other ornament over there. So what you do is literally twirl it around until everything has a nice, even coating to it. And you want to work it around very carefully. And what I mean by very carefully, that way you don't get the rim of your cup. Because you don't want to get the outside rim. It's fine if it drips inside. But if it gets on the outside rim, that could transfer to the outside of your ornament. Okay, so I've got it Luxo, and it has a nice coating. So what we're going to do is going to leave it like that for about the next, oh, I don't know, maybe five minutes. Allow it to fully drip down into our cup here. And then we'll continue on with the next step. All right, this guy has had plenty of time. So we are going to flip it over and get to work. So let's see, I wonder if I should get further back. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cone into place and start pouring some, uh, glitter in here now i will say this much if you're going to fill this up with the same type of glitter overall just pour it into the cone 
getting in the bottom and literally, you know, use the palm of your hand very carefully and kind of, you know, tap it around until you get everything coated. If you need more, add some more and you're good to go. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do some that will have a combination of different glitters. And so I'm going to show you how I go about doing that. Hopefully I can stay on camera today. All right. So I've got some of this, which is kind of a chunky glitter. Uh, and this is Color Obsession. And my buddy Erica has this this stuff and it is gorgeous there are several different colors so we're gonna pour a chunk into here and a little bit on my hand <laughs> i'm also doing this on a tray to just to keep kind of the mess contained let's see i'm gonna tap this a little bit in case there's any inside all right so i've got a ball of it down at the bottom i probably pour too much so what I'm going to do here is I kind of want it loose. I don't want it to have rough edges to it. So I'm going to just kind of, kind of shake it a little bit so I get some of this going on. All right. And I still got some left over. So I've got an empty cup here. Always make sure, double check to make sure you don't have any glue inside that because once I do this, it's pretty much done. So you just shake it and get rid of your excess. Now, I will have some over here from just dumping it out. I knew that was going to happen, but it is going to have a lot more spaces involved. And that's what we're going to be talking about right now, is we're going to be filling the spaces. So, there's a couple different things I can do. Hmm. I've got... Some uh, interference powder here that I use also in my resin, and that would work really well. This is a uh, bling it violet, so it's a sparkly violet, and I can literally scoop it out and pour it into the top very carefully, or I could just use my funnel. And to be honest with you, this is a fine powder, so I'm just going to go ahead and scoop out, I think... When I say scoop out, I mean like about that much. So that's like two scoops. Give it a little tap, let that go down there. And then let's see. I think I'm gonna a little shake. And I'm just gonna use my palm and just very carefully start moving it around. Now I was doing some ornaments uh, last year that were much thicker than this, so you could get, you could really get rough with it, um, and they could handle it. I'm not so sure about these guys if they're that, that tough. I'm trying to see inside if I've got a lot of loose powder in there. Okay, and some extra big flakes will come out every time you shake it, and that's okay. Because you probably got some that will, um, got, when they're glued down, one could be glued down pretty good and one could be like partially. So it's only got like a little bit. And through the shaking, it'll eventually become loose. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to really change it up just so that you can see how this uh, gradually covers up. Because what we're doing with, we're building with big flakes. So you, you fill up the flakes with tiny particles and then you get kind of a graduation of every all the different colors so we've got an interference purple there uh kind of an iridescent color and now i'm going to add a little bit of like a silver mica powder or not a mica powder i should say more, more like a metallic powder and you know what i'm actually going to change this up because i don't have any metallic powders in my cone and I don't want to mess up any future adventures. I'm going to very carefully put it straight in there. I'm almost not breathing. <laughs> Just to make sure I don't make a mess. 
and this should fill up all the rest of the little spots and see it's very metallic-y very silvery perfect for christmas for holidays and we start at the bottom and we work our way up and if we need to add more we just add more Just very gradually, we're move, moving it to the top. And then after a little bit, I'm going to look down in the hole and see if I've got anything loose in there. And then I might cover it up with one of my beaker fingers and give it a good shake. And so there's not a lot of silver on my thumb in there. So... We're pretty good on the particles. You see here, it's mostly the larger flakes down here and then it just gradually gets filled in more and more like you see more of the purple there and you're seeing more of the silver on top. But very, very gradual. But that should give you a nice background to do any alcohol ink and be very sparkly too. So. Nice and festive. So hang on and I'll show you the rest of the ones I did. So I wanted to bring this one back so that you see this. And this is the one I did a couple days ago. All right, now. <laughs> Imagine that with this behind it. And that could be really pretty. I'll carefully put that down. Get my cup back up. I do want to make sure that I tell you this too. So my excess that I have in here, after a while, um, if let's say you're mostly doing whites or silvers or something like that, so you've got a color um, a family in here, you'll have a bunch of different sizes mixed up with it. And eventually you'll get enough here that this will do fine for an ornament all by itself. And so you can just pour this into the cone and you got yourself another ornament. Okay, so here's another one I did that's very similar to this guy here, this the one with the silver. But this time I used gold. So I started off with some interference powder on the bottom and then I had some bigger flakes in there and then filled it up with some you see that purple there? That's that interference purple. And then filled it up with gold. Now the reason why this one has a white spot on here is I had prepared a bunch of these that I was going to start working on some glitter. And then uh, Hubby came home and he had to uh, quarantine for a week. So we had I had to vacate the studio quickly. So that polyacrylic had to basically sit in these and dry completely. And I had to re-coat these guys. So that's what happens if you let it, okay, come on, focus. There we go. If you let it dry, you're gonna end up with a spot there. You can go ahead and re-coat and that's, it still does pretty good. I mean, that doesn't look too bad, but you might have one area that has a spot. So don't fret over it if you have to walk away. I just want to let you know that that's what ends up happening. But if you do it normally, it looks like this all over. So that turned out pretty good. All right, and then I started messing around with some whites here. And this one here, I ended up with some larger areas. Uh, they're really super fine stuff. And I did those first and then filled it up with the bigger pieces. And then at the last bit, I always put some fine in there because, like I said, the fine will fill up all the little cracks. All right, let's see. I think this is just the, the mixture overall. Very even. I did it. Can you tell I did a few whites? <laughs> Let's see. Is this one looking any different? Nope. Okay. 
Here we go with some color. We gotta be careful with that one. So this one I start off with a halo on the bottom. It's another one of the ones I glued up and had it set. But I start off with halo. Now, if you just turn your glitter very slowly, you'll have really strong lines. Now, if you're okay with that, do that. But I wanted to do it a little bit with this guy just so I can show you. When you pounce it on your palm, you get this feathered look to it. And so part of it, I, I spun it around so I would get those strong lines. And then the other part, I feathered it out with my, the palm of my hand. So it depends on the look you want. If you want it to look like it's blended from one color to the other, or if you want a strong line, that's how you do that. So literally, you pour the glitter into here, like so it's sitting in the cup. Then you just slowly tilt it and turn it around, just kind of like you do when you're uh, filling it up with a polyacrylic. And then eventually, it gets filled up. And then the last color I applied was this pink. And that is fun. And oh yeah, I threw in a little bit of interference red with the pink first. And I kind of mixed it up in a, well not that cup because it's got glue in there. That, it's that cup right there. Uh, with a little interference red in there. So it's got a little bit of a an extra interference shimmer to it. And that helps pick up colors on the light. So you might get some um, extra little punch of red or, or a violet in there. So that's fun. And then I did another one over here. I got really creative. Um, and then this one, I started off with a fine white on the bottom. I don't know where this dark blue is coming from. That's weird. Huh. Um, then I did this one that was, I believe it's a mermaid color. Let me see. I used this one. Yeah, I guess you're right. Mermaid scales. So it has a variety of different sizes. And then the last color I did was this guy here, which is the turquoise C. And it seems like it's all like torn pieces. So they're really almost like a foil. So that was kind of kind of how you do an ombre. You add a little bit in there, you, you, you palm it around real quick, you know, to taper it off. You get the feathered edges and then you add another color a little bit darker and a little bit darker and a little bit darker now it does go in and add speckles in there which can look like it peppers it so if you're not looking for that then what i would advise you to do is use a very fine glitter all the way through and that will probably help that out quite a bit on your ombre to get it nice and smooth but i was just kind of playing around to see what would happen so that's that all right, so that's how you do that and fill up the inside. The other thing you can do is um, uh, primary elements, which is color art. Um, Erica sells the resin art version, but the primary elements is the, the version of the product that works with acrylic paints. And since polyacrylic is kind of a base for some acrylic paints, you can put primary elements in there and it will color it kind of like this where you get in the really bright, rich colors and you can use that same technique. So check out my other videos on uh, ornaments I did last year and I'll see if I can uh, link some up here. In fact, you know what? I take it back. Um, there's a playlist I created and this is part of the playlist for holiday uh, decorations or holiday ornaments, one of the two. And it'll be on that playlist. So, yeah, check that out if you're interested in that. All right. So, have some fun. And here's the two metallic powders I was using. And I believe most mica powders will do fine with this technique as well. Um, obviously, super fine glitters will do great. Uh, chameleon's well, but chameleon's expensive. Um... The recollection stuff, this super fine glitters, these work great. In fact, this one's kind of fun. It's glow in the dark. So, yeah, there's a lot of options for you. Uh, this particular company here, I believe you can find it on Amazon. Um, they have a whole bunch of like super fine glitters and halos and all different colors and such. 
So have fun. Later, y'all. I forgot to mention this and I probably should mention this. Um, when you've got your ornament done and all your glitters attached, I would leave it resting for probably, I don't know, maybe um, at least a good couple hours just to make sure the polyacrylics really dried up nicely and it bonds with your glitter. If you could do it overnight, that'd be more ideal. So I wouldn't worry about doing any um, alcohol inks or any other embellishments for quite some time. So just to give it a chance to, to really dry up nicely. So that's why multiple cups, because you're gonna get on a roll, I promise. <laughs> All right, later. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. And don't forget, check the links in the description below for any supplies I use you might be interested in, as well as a link to my Etsy store because I've got a bunch of stuff up. Check it out. Later, y'all. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh-oh. So a lot of the uh, supplies I use for resin, I get from Artists Till Death. And they sell these guys here. And also the Bling It um, Primary Elements, the, inter uh, the interference powders, too, that I use today. So if you're interested in that, that's where you get it. And there's a coupon code there, too, so definitely check out my link. There you go.